Hello everyone, Air Max here. Today I'm gonna be talking about Starfield. And dude, I have a lot to say. I have so much to say, like it's, it's disgusting. Let's get into it. As always, let's start with a little bit of context. You know I'm an avid gamer, you know I've bought all the latest AAA release for the last two years. I'm really into it. I was waiting for Starfield. I was excited to say the least. I didn't get into the, the pre-release of the game because I was in holidays and I didn't feel like spending more money to have access to the game one week before it actually launched. I just looked at the, the preview and start to do like every gamer out there, look at all the, the review and the benchmark. And you know, like some things that's really frustrated me uh, for the, the latest game I bought is like most of those games when they come out and they are released well they are not finished but this is not the point of this video like the, the truth is like nowadays as a gamer we have to deal with the fact that those games when they are released they are just not optimized Starfield is one of those games my concern towards those games is that I just can't buy them knowing that my PC, which is in my opinion not, not a bad PC, I own a 5950X and a RTX 1490, so I guess I'm pretty decent when it comes to performance, will just not be able to run the game at the refresh rate of my screen. So I wouldn't say like I want the game to run at 270 FPS constant, but I'm expected to run to at least like 150 FPS to, for me to have a good experience. When I start to look at those benchmark oh boy oh boy the surprise dude so i'm using uh, this website called computerbase.de it's a german website and i like them because they go straight to the point there is no much blah blah it's just like okay this is the performance uh, by resolution and this is what you get so all those tests have been realized in in windows 10 and you can see right off the bat that the 1490 here is only like four percent stronger than a 7900 xtx i don't want to bash amd fanboy i don't want to bash the lover of this specific card but we know for fact that the 4090 is to date the best card on the market. And when I see a game released and showing that there is only a difference of 4% between those cards at this resolution, it just doesn't make sense to me. It, it just, it's just pure wrong. I mean, like something is wrong in the way they develop the game. Let me explain. I would say average when you look at the rasterized, rasterized computing power of those cards, in this resolution, 1440p, the 1490 is normally 23% faster than a 7900 XTX. But when I look at the number of this specific game, it's only 4%. I'm losing 20% right off the bat. So when I look at this graph, I'm trying to understand what is the bottleneck here. Because it looks like the, the, the GPU has a problem and it could be related to the CPU. I don't have access to the game because obviously I didn't buy it, but you can gather this information from, from those websites. So let's, let's dig into it. So now if you go in detail and you look at the 3900K, which could be like, which should be like 100% here, and you compare it to, let's say the 7950X 3D here, you will notice that the 3900K is 35% more faster in this game than a 3900k and i'm like i think there is a difference intel is supposed to be ahead like single thread performance i get it but it's not like 35 percent ahead of amg like some something is also telling me another story there and again i, I don't want to be against like the intel fine board or amg fine board like I'm, I'm just looking at the data here because i know some of you are going to be like oh no but Air Max, you are pro AMG or you are pro Intel or pro Nvidia. No, I'm, I'm just looking at the number here. And there is no way in, in hell that the 3900K is 35% faster than the 750X 3D or even like 7800X 3D, like 26% faster, like doesn't make sense to me. Again, I went on the same website and, and look at the performance rating for the CPU in single core. And guess what? There is only 11% difference between those, those two CPU in terms of performance. 
Now let's go, let's go with the multi-core. And the multi-core, there is 7% performance. Because so let's say like the game is using all the core, which I highly doubt. But let's say, let's say it's like perf perfectly optimized. <laughs> like my dream. My dream. But it's not happening, boys. Like, let's be clear. How, how do we explain that? I dig deeper. And look what I found. Starfield average graphic power. If you look at all those tests and review, you can see the GPU is used at 100%. It's not the same issue that we had with the previous game like uh, Star Wars uh, Jedi Survivor. In Star Wars Jedi Survivor, if you remember, the CPU was working correctly, but the GPU was just under used. Somehow I couldn't reach 100% GPU usage with my graphic card. And this was the issue. Here is different. The graphic card looks like it's used at 100%. But then when you look at the Starfield average graphic power, you can see here we have a big, big issue, dude. <laughs> like we have a big, big issue. The 790 XTX is pushing 360 watts. Doing a good job, AMG, like, adds down. The 1490, 232 watts. So, to give you an example, the 1490 FE limit in terms of power is 450 watts. My graphic card, the power limit is 600 watts, if I remember correctly. So, we are in a case here where the 1490 is showing 100% of usage, but is not using any power. <laughs> What's happening? What's happening? Well, I'm going to tell you what's happening. And this is where we make the link with the open source community. We had this post two days ago by Nefcent402 on Reddit PC Master Race. I'm going to read it to you because it's, it's super interesting. In case you wanted to know a few reasons why Starfield is so unoptimized. VKD3D, the Direct12 to Vulkan translation layer. This is what we use to run game on Linux. Developer has put a change log for a new version that is about to be released and also pull a request with more information about what he discovered about the awful things that Starfing is doing to GPU driver. I'm gonna put a link in the description below for you guys to read the more technical aspect. But well, you got the idea, okay? I'm gonna read what he's saying because he's gonna be able to explain way better than I will ever do it. So basically, Starfield allocates its memory incorrectly where it doesn't align with the CPU page size. If your GPU drivers are not robust against this, your game is going to crash at random times. So that's the first issue, random crash. And I've seen a lot of posts of people complaining about the fact it was crashing. But okay, why not? It doesn't explain the issue with the GPU usage, right? Oh wait, it's not done. Starfield abuses a Direct 12 feature called Execute and Direct. One of the things that this want is some hints from the game so that the graphic driver knows what to expect. Since Starfield sends in bogus hints, the graphic driver get caught off guard trying to process the data and end up making bubbles in the common queue. <laughs> Those bubbles mean the GPU has to stop what it's doing double check the assumption it made about the indirect execute and start over again. Issue number three, Starfield create multiple execute indirect calls back to back instead of batching them, meaning the problem above is compounded multiple times. So now you understand it, guys. You, un you understand the whole to story. GPU is just playing ping pong uh, with the data and the CPU trying to figure it out what is going on. It shows that it's used at 100%, except that it does not use it at 100%. <laughs> like the power is not even there. And this is what's going on with Starfield. What it also shows is that the AMD driver we are always like spitting on are actually super solid when it comes to like issue like that, because obviously they are impacted, but they are not as impacted has the NVIDIA driver. Talking about that, y you want to know also like wh what, what happened with Starfield at launch on Linux? Well, Starfield launched on Linux and it was working pretty well. Again, like number from computerbase.de 
showing you that in certain cases, Linux performance was above Windows. As I mentioned many times during my multiple review and comparison of game between Windows and Linux, what I noticed and what show up in this driver and this graph is the fact that Linux does better when you put all the heavy lifting on the CPU because the way Linux manage CPU resources and is able to push the CPU is just better than on Windows. And you can see it there. When you play in low resolution and you set up the graphic detail to low, you can see that Linux is overperforming Windows, even if it has to go through the translation layer of Proton. This is just crazy, guys. It's, it kind of show you the power of Linux when it comes to management of the hardware and CPU, and, and especially the CPU. Like, it's just crazy. But then, if you put workload on the GPU, you can see that Windows come back up, and it, and it come back up pretty strongly with 14%. So you have to take those with a, a little bit of grain of salt because as I, as I show you earlier, the game is like non-optimized at all. I would say bugged at this point because it's, it's more than non-optimized. It's like, it's, it's, a, it's a mess. Let's, let's be clear, this game is a mess. But it kind of show you like, and tell you like the story as we know it on my Linux channel and all the Linux users, which are like, or even new Windows users, which are like kind of like curious about with the difference between Windows and Linux gaming. Those graphs are pretty representative of the state of Linux gaming. You have on one hand, you have Linux, which is managing uh, the CPU usage like, like a god. And on the other hand, you have driver on Linux, which are not as optimized as the one on Windows. So when you make the switch, uh, you can be a little bit behind in terms of performance versus Windows. But it's kind of incredible to say that at launch with an unoptimized piece of software, Linux was doing better in certain cases for gaming. It's just mind blowing. So you're gonna be like, hey, Max, if it was working that well, why you didn't buy the game? Well, <laughs> well, 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 let's, let's talk about that too. When I was saying the driver are actually weak on Linux, is they are. And Nvidia driver just won't work like the latest one at least they, they just don't work you can't launch the game or you launch it and it crashed right away because the way like uh, the nvidia driver deal with this issue is just so bad it, it just you can't start the game the revision 535 you just can't use them so you have to roll back to the 530 or 525 to have access to the game but then those drivers they are so way behind in terms of like optimization and everything that you will play the game at like 25 fps on a 1490 so it's just unplayable so right now if you have an amg card and you are on linux you are golden you are literally golden because the dev team of proton is gonna fix the game for you guys you're gonna have better performance than everybody else which is running the game on windows believe it or not but that's just incredible that's that's the takeaway of this of this all like discussion i just wanted you to understand it now when it comes for the nvidia user we had the the first answer one hour ago which is pretty fresh on the github of valve and and the thread of starfield where uh, the nvidia driver rep actually gave us an answer so nvidia driver team is actively working on this bug here is an update from last week investigation there appears to be two issues first one Launch on Pascal GPU with error graphic does not car does not meet the minimal specification requirement is due to a missing extension required by Vicky 3G due to hardware limitation is not possible to add support. Sorry for you guys. Now for the later generation, we are still working on a root cause for this. Sorry for the inconvenience. We are still working hard on this bug. We are aiming to provide a fix in the next branch driver, not the next release the next branch I, I don't know how long it's gonna take we know for sure that the 540 are gonna be jumped and it's gonna go right away to the 545 i've been waiting for the 545 driver for a long time because they are gonna provide the best wayland support ever like a lot of functions are gonna be pushed on those drivers so I'm, I'm i'm waiting for that really impatiently but yeah nvidia driver we are on the side of the road right now 
So your best opportunity here is to install Windows. <laughs> Yeah, no. Now you know the little story about Starfield, optimization, and the way it works on Linux. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you want to give a thumb up, a follow, a subscription, a Patreon, or a YouTube membership, please do. I already count on you. I'm going to say to you, uh, have a great rest of your day, and see you in the next one. Bisous, bisous.